If you've ever tried your hand at any artistic pursuit, you've probably cringed when looking back at some of your earlier work. The same is true even for world-famous musicians. With that in mind, here are some rappers who've admitted that they're ashamed of their past lyrics. What a difference growing up, raking in millions of dollars, and a bit of refinement can make. All that seems to be at least partly why Jay-Z felt differently about the lyrics to his 2000 song, Big Pimpin', 10 years after its release. In 2010, while he was promoting his book, Decoded, which breaks down his lyrics and songwriting approach, he talked about how some of his lyrics are, quote, profound, but not those in his 2000 hit, Big Pimpin'. In the song, Jay raps about keeping beautiful women around for occasional flings, but nothing else. If things even begin to resemble a relationship or a woman expresses dissatisfaction in any way, he's quote, breezin', meaning that he's not sticking around for anything short of a good time. As he raps at one point, me give my heart to a woman? Not for nothing, never happen. But in the years since, Jay has gone on to see things very differently. As he told the Wall Street Journal, it was like, I can't believe I said that, and kept saying it. What kind of animal would say this sort of thing? Reading it is really harsh. One of the things that late Pittsburgh rapper Mac Miller was known for was his work ethic. There are stories of him being holed up in his home studio for incredibly long periods with little to no breaks in between. In 2013, he told Complex that while working on his 2012 jazz EP, You, he spent two straight weeks in the studio without showering. He also talked in that interview about his debut album, Blue Slide Park, as he noted that he didn't care for the lyrics in the songs Up All Night and Party on Fifth Ave, which both have words dedicated to having wild, careless fun. Those songs are different from the cuts that Miller made afterward that have depth and plenty of introspection, something that he obviously felt Up All Night and Party on Fifth Ave were lacking. As he put it, I can't make Up All Night right now. That's the only record I regret. Party on Fifth Ave? Great song, I guess. It's fun. But when I listen to that song and those verses, I hear nothing. I don't say anything. You know, you just, you just own it. Tragically, Miller died at the age of 26 on September 7, 2018, from an accidental overdose. Even though he was so young, he left a huge mark on music that won't soon be forgotten. The beaches in Rick Ross's hometown of Miami are known for nice, warm water that's ideal for swimming. But those sun-baked waves are nothing compared to the hot water Ross found himself in after rapping an ultra-creepy lyric on Atlanta rapper Rocco's 2013 song, You O E N O. In the lyrics in question, he references putting Molly, the slang term for the drug MDMA, in someone's champagne and then taking her home. Ross was taken to task for the lyrics on social media, but his tepid response made things even worse as he tweeted, I don't condone rape. Apologies for the lyric interpreted as rape. In April of that year, Reebok, one of Ross's business partners, ended their relationship with him. As the company said in a statement obtained by TMZ, Reebok holds our partners to a high standard and we expect them to live up to the values of our brand. Unfortunately, Rick Ross has failed to do so. While we do not believe that Rick Ross condones sexual assault, we are very disappointed he has yet to display an understanding of the seriousness of this issue or an appropriate level of remorse. Shortly thereafter, Ross offered an apology that showed much more contrition, as he said in a statement, to suggest in any way that harm and violation be brought to a woman is one of my biggest mistakes and regrets. Even before Iggy Azalea broke onto the scene with her 2014 album, The New Classic, she had to deal with a lot of criticism on social media, whether it was from rival rappers, music critics, or just the general public. More often than not, she stood her ground and shot back. But in 2012, she took a different approach after many were offended by a line in her song, D-R-U-G-S, in which she rapped, When the relay starts, I'm a runaway slave master. Some people considered the use of the term slave master racist, especially considering that Azalea is white. Harlem rapper Azalea Banks was one of the first to call her out. Iggy Azalea eventually issued an apology letter, in which she noted that D-R-U-G-S was inspired by rapper Kendrick Lamar's song, Look Out For Detox, and that she had played off his words. As she explained, this is a metaphoric take on an originally literal lyric. 
and I was never trying to say I am a slave owner. She also noted, in all fairness, it was a tacky and careless thing to say, and if you are offended, I am sorry. I regret not thinking things through more. The Beastie Boys have released plenty of classic songs and albums over the course of their decades-long career. They've matured plenty artistically over the years, but in their early days, they presented an image of wild frat boy types. That mainly has to do with their 1987 hit single, You Gotta Fight For Your Right To Party, and its accompanying video, which shows them as rebellious young men eager to make parents everywhere upset. The song came off the group's 1986 debut studio album, License to Ill. That same album also features some homophobic lyrics that the Beasties eventually came to regret, like on the song Hold It Now, Hit It, which features the line, You're wet behind the ears, you like men, and we like beer. In a 1999 letter written to Time Out New York, the Beasties' Adam Horowitz, aka Ad Rock wrote, I would like to formally apologize to the entire gay and lesbian community for the and ignorant things we said on our first record. There are no excuses, but time has healed our stupidity. We have learned and sincerely changed since the 80s. We hope that you'll accept this long overdue apology. One love. In August of 1955, a 14-year-old black boy named Emmett Till was kidnapped, beaten, and killed by a white man in Mississippi who believed that Till made an aggressive pass at his wife. The man's half-brother also helped commit the murder, but they were both acquitted. One year later, they admitted to the crime, and in 2007, Carolyn Bryant, the woman who claimed that Till flirted with her, said that she lied about the whole thing. The incident helped spark the civil rights movement, with activist Rosa Parks once saying, I thought of Emmett Till, and I couldn't go to the back of the bus. Throughout the years, various rappers have paid tribute to the likes of both Parks and Till in their lyrics, so it was shocking to many when Lil Wayne used Till's tragedy to describe what he would do with a woman on Future's 2013 song, Karate Chop. Following significant backlash, Wayne's label, Epic Records, issued an apology to Till's family. And so did Wayne, as he admitted that he regretted the hurt that he caused. As he put it, Moving forward, I will not use or reference Emmett Till or the Till family in my music, especially in an inappropriate manner. I will not be performing the lyrics that contain that reference live and have removed them from my catalog. Big Sean and late actress Naya Rivera started dating in 2013 after meeting on Twitter and got engaged shortly afterward. But by April 2014, they departed ways. Then a few months later, Big Sean released a song called I Don't F With You that many assumed was about Rivera because of its reference to someone having a new man. The song resulted in plenty of controversy, though it died down over time, and soon enough, there wasn't much talk of it or the former couple split. But that changed on July 8, 2020, after Rivera died by drowning in California's Lake Piru, which led many people to bring up her past relationship with Sean, as well as IDFWU. The rapper later said that he regretted making the track because of everything that his ex accomplished in her life. As he told Vulture in September 2020, she's made such an impact on people, and she's done so many great things in her life and her career that it was hurtful to even have that song be associated with her. Sean also revealed that he'd played the song to Rivera before it was released and that she liked it, but then he also noted, if I would have known something this tragic would have happened, I would have never made the song. I just wanted to see her, that's why I came. <laughs> Meek Mill found himself in a world of controversy for delivering a line in his song, Don't Worry, that referenced the death of NBA legend Kobe Bryant. One of the people who found it tasteless was Bryant's widow, Vanessa. The lyric in question featured Mill rapping, If I ever lack, I'm going out with my chopper. It be another Kobe. Chopper is slang for a large automatic weapon, like an AK-47. That when fired sounds like a helicopter hence the name. Plenty of people found this line offensive, as Bryant died in a helicopter accident on January 26, 2020, along with his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, and seven others. On February 22, 2021, Vanessa Bryant sent a message to Mill on Instagram stories in which she wrote, Dear Meek Mill, I find this line to be extremely insensitive and disrespectful, period. I am not familiar with any of your music, but I believe you can do better than this. If you are a fan, fine. There's a better way to show your admiration for my husband. This lacks respect and tact. 
Mill then responded to Vanessa Bryant while also tweeting on the following day that he'd apologize to her in private. In rap music, as in both genres, there are two kinds of artists. There are those who seem to enjoy songwriting, and then there are the ones who focus more on the business end of things. They don't much care if they write a good song or not, so long as it charts well. Machine Gun Kelly appears to be the former, as he was bothered that his label Interscope Records forced him to move forward with a song that was halfway done before it got to him. The song in question was 2012's Invincible, off his debut album Lace Up. It features his former label mate Esther Dean, and was produced by Alex DeKid. The way it appears, the suits at Interscope wanted to ensure that MGK had a hit on his first album that would constantly be played on the radio. MGK hasn't exactly said that he was ashamed of the lyrics that he penned for the song, but he didn't like not being able to work with Dean in person, as her vocals were already on the chorus and he wasn't in the studio with Alex DeKid either. As he explained to Tampa Bay radio station Wild 94.1, I don't operate like that. I hate cookie cutter songs. I write all my hooks. So when I got this hook, I was offended. You guys think I'm a cookie cutter artist? I don't work like that. When Drake talked about the release of his sophomore album, Take Care, with the Los Angeles Times in 2011, he noted how the lyrics, quote, were really important to him, while implying that that wasn't the case with his debut LP, Thank Me Later. He also mentioned that he wasn't all that fond of his first album and wished he had more time to craft it. As he put it, to be 100% honest, I wasn't necessarily happy with Thank Me Later. People loved it, but I just knew what I was capable of with a little more time. When you get a young artist and they are on the rise, often the music becomes not what they have going on in their lives or surrounding things, but it starts to lose substance. I'd really like to take this opportunity to publicly apologize. Despite Drake's misgivings, Thank Me Later spent a ridiculous 92 weeks on Billboard's album sales charts, peaking at number one. That's not bad for an album he wasn't fully satisfied with. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.